Tixer. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys something that I've kind of been keeping to myself, as you guys can see from the title. Um, I have actually shot this video in like various ways. <laughs> I've shot, I've, I've tried to make this video several times and it just never seemed quite right. It never seemed like I was delivering it right. So today I finally decided to just sit down and share it with you. Um, so I decided I'd probably just record this video um, while doing something because it would help me like kind of, you know, think and also and on the other end just like kind of distract me but in the process things kind of change so you know if you're interested in finding out you know what I've been waiting to tell you guys keep on watching so guys I'm just gonna start off with um, my just hydrating my face I've been loving the Neutrogena Hydro Boost it really like hydrates my face so well it feels like water. It's a gel cream and I had it in my um, Clean Beauty video that I did in collaboration with CVS. If you haven't seen that video, check it out, especially if you've heard a lot about Clean Beauty and um, you're not sure what it is and you know you want to make sure that the products that you use are clean. Putting on sunscreen. So without like for let's just get into this video for real i figured in order for me to like tell you what's going on i feel like i need to have kind of talk about the backstory a little bit so it starts all in like 2010 i guess um some of you may have been following me from my old channel i don't know but some of you and if you have oh my god drop a comment if you've been following me from my old channel i had a channel before i had this channel and at that point i was almost done with college um i took like a year or two off because i had had alex and so i went back to school and i was working part-time i was going to college by that point i was self-aware enough to know that you know what i was going to school for i didn't want to do but the issue was you know what i'm looking for my my foundation kudos for your girl i actually finally got a mic and all that good stuff so the quality of our videos will be improving but i'm filming this video in a little bit of a rush so i didn't have time yet I haven't even taken out the package i have to take it out figure out how it works all that good stuff haven't done none of that yet so please bear with me in the audio my mom really wanted me to go to nursing school and in retrospect i wish i had listened because it would have really given me the flexibility that i kind of needed she wanted me to go to nursing school and I said, no, I may end up in nursing school, who knows? Um, and so I decided to get a degree in biology instead. It was science, it gave me options. I could go to medical school, pharmacy school, all that. It made her happy, so I went, I did that. Also, if you keep hearing, if you hear any beeping sounds, it is the fire alarm, I'm aware of it. My home has really, really high ceilings and uh, well, for whatever the case may be, my landlord did not change the um, battery on the fire alarm, which would not be an issue because I could just order the batteries. But this one fire alarm is like, I don't know, 10 feet off the ground or something ridiculously high like that. Um, and so I can't get to it. I'm working on getting it changed. Um, okay. Honestly, I feel like if I had followed my passions, if I had done what I wanted to do, I think my life would be a lot different, but you know, you can't go back in time. So that's that. Um, if I look this way a little bit, it's because my mirror is right here, but I'm just using the Wet n Wild um, foundation stick. This foundation stick is great if you have oily, um, dry skin. I wouldn't recommend it if you have oily skin and I have oily skin, but I'm out of the regular foundation I want to use and I did a whole video with wet and wild so if you're interested in like more details what I do like about this foundation though is the color it's like a neutral tone and I find that in my shade it's either too dark it's either too orange it's either too orange I rarely find like my dark shade in yellow anyways so I really like the fact that this is neutral because you guys know I have hyperpigmentation I really like that because that foundation because it's like boop 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 you're out the door like it's really quick but anyway uh so I knew at that point that I did not want to you know go to medical school pharmacy school I had a child and I knew that the kind of like you know it's, it's one thing if you do something hard that you actually really want to do 
you know, it's another thing if you're doing something hard that you know that you don't want to do. Like, you know, I knew medical or even pharmacy school would take a lot of will. And I knew I didn't want to do it. And I knew myself enough to know that it would be a waste of time. Also, I've been in, I've been undergrad for years. So, you know, <laughs> I think everybody was ready for me to graduate. I think that was like, I graduated my seventh year. So I started college in 2015. I graduated in 2014. <laughs> I'm so used to saying 20. Um, I got graduated in 2000 and... 2002. Um, so, and I didn't start college till 2003. Um, so three plus four is 2007. This was 2010. So I think at this point, everybody just wanted me to be done. Okay. Um, and I wanted me to be done. So I was just like, let me suck it up. Let me get out. Let me get this degree. And I got it. Thank God. Um, and honestly, it's one of the biggest challenges, <laughs> like one of the biggest challenges I ever overcame. Like, you know, at some point I was just like, well, I just, is that going to be my legacy that I couldn't, you know, go graduate from college? And I, I know everybody's circumstances are different. And if you didn't graduate from co college, this is not meant to make you feel bad. It's just like, you know, I had all of the things that I needed to be able to graduate. I went to a good high school. I had a parent that was supportive. I had a parent who also went to college, you know. So I had the support system in, in, in the general sense that I should be able to graduate from college, you know, and I didn't want to be, you know, that I didn't want my legacy to be that I went to college and got pregnant. You know, I just didn't want that to be my legacy. And I didn't want that to be my mom's legacy as well. You know, being that she was a single parent, a lot of, you know, Nigeria is very, there's just a lot of stigmas and things like that. Um, and so I pushed myself really hard, um, you know, trying to figure out, you know, who's going to watch my kid, just all those logistics, working, all that good stuff. It was just like really hard, flunked a couple of classes, had to retake them. Um, because I bit too much. I bit too much. So all in all to say that, you know, I even like got denied financial aid because apparently when I moved states, I didn't fill out the proper paperwork and then I ended up getting a scholarship. So just a lot of stuff happened. And I remember when I got my clearance letter and I saw that I had, a 4.0 GPA like I literally started bawling at work like I cried so hard <laughs> like my 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 boss because I worked in school um I was like a office assistant my boss thought something was wrong and I was just like you don't know how hard I've worked to get here like I never thought this is gonna you know I, at some points I wondered if I would ever graduate you know I'm using my holy grail you guys already know <laughs> anyways so it was just a really like I remember there was one class that I was sure I was gonna like I, I didn't think it was gonna fail the class but I thought you know that I was gonna get like a C which was gonna mess up my plans that to graduate with a 4.0 4 because this girl was like she was a professor but she was like young like me maybe she was like in her 30s um but she was known for being like such an a-hole she always gave like the hardest exams and all the rumors were true but i needed to graduate so people like actively avoided her class um and she gave me an a and i think it's because i won like, she asked some questions that, like, were graduate-level questions. I remember she gave us, like, our midterm was, like, a take-home exam, and it was basically a research project, project, and it was basically, like, stuff we had never learned. A, a B was on Google, okay? A B was on Google, and I think I found the answers. <laughs> but I think I made a first impression in the first class because she asked a question that most people normally fail or don't get right, and I did because it was a common sense question. Anyway, to say the least, um, I got an A in that class. So that just, like, I remember one day I was driving home. It was really late at night. It was really dark. And 
I need to get to the point of this video. Um, and I had all these like doubts in my head, you know, about like, I'm not going to pass this class. I'm going to get a C. I'm not going to meet my goal. And I just started screaming in the car. I was like, I started screaming at these thoughts. Like sometimes, you know, when doubt creeps, creeps in, you just have to scream. I started screaming in the name of Jesus. I was like, listen, listen, I'm going to get an A. Okay. I am going to get an A. And I got an A. And I think that's the day I got my breakthrough. P.S. But anyways, um, so we finished undergrad. I knew I didn't want to pursue anything in the medical field. Um, and so I started looking for a job. Of course, there's like barely any jobs unless you've done some great internships in undergrad if you have a biology degree. Um, so I didn't find one. for, <laughs> And it was like the tail end of the recession. So finding jobs is kind of hard. I got a couple of phone interviews, never made it. Well, I got one phone interview and I never made it. And, and a friend of mine who worked in education actually recommended, she's like, you have all what it takes to be a good teacher. Why don't you try? And that's how I got into the alternative search program. So I literally had six weeks of training before I became a high school science teacher. And then I was going to school because I needed a certain level, of, a number of credits to get a formal certification. Um, I had like a provisional certification. And so I was getting my master's, um, teaching basically a single parent to a toddler, and I was still running my YouTube channel. Um, and then I started a blog. So, you know, I was running my YouTube channel, I started a blog, I was doing all these things all at the same time. In that whole transition, I decided to shut down my old YouTube channel and I decided to open up a new YouTube channel. And um, just because I didn't want my students to find me and my old YouTube channel and all that stuff was in my name, which is why I rebranded and I started, I started Supple Chic. And then I started my blog because I just didn't want those two parts of my life to kind of like run into each other. Right? In retrospect, I don't know why. I don't know if it was the branding wise. I don't know if it, it was the smartest decision. But back then, people, very few people had sites in their name. So let me say that. And I feel like it was one of the biggest mistakes I had made because I had been making videos for about a year and I had picked up a thousand subscribers. Okay. And I was like finally building some momentum. Um, when I think about some of the girls that I, I, I you know, made videos with back then like they have you know pr they're pretty successful right now so um and so i thought oh you know all my followers will come from my old channel to my new channel no that did not happen um and also youtube changed in that one year like the way the algorithm worked because back then if you had a thousand subscribers like 800 people were gonna watch your videos okay it was one for one at that point um, and in that process, everything changed. Um, and you know, because I was so busy with everything else, I really wasn't paying attention and I wasn't being as consistent. Um, so I would only like make videos like when we had days off and things like that. Um, but I continued making videos. I started taking pictures out outside of my apartment. If you go to my blog and you get all my old photos, I used to take pictures by myself outside of my apartment. I did not have the money to pay a photographer. I was super shy, number one. So the thought of like going to a place and taking pictures was a no because I used to take pictures by myself with my little Canon remote, okay, outside of my apartment. I have a crop sensor camera, which meant that it was really hard to take pictures inside my apartment. You had to stand like really far back to get a full shot. And then also on top of that, you know, the lighting in my apartment was not good. So I used to just stand in front of my apartment on day that I had, on like the, probably like MLK, things, like all those days the teachers got off and I would shoot pictures. And that's how I used to create content for my blog. And I used to take, you know, I used to film in my room, like I'm currently doing now, um, videos. And so that's how I was doing the whole thing. Um, anyways, fast forward, I got my master's, um, 2015. And by that point, I already knew that um, I didn't want to be in education long term. There were some things that I loved about education, and then there's just some things that I did not like. And I feel like I have to tell you the backstory, so just bear with me, have a little patience, and you know, the news will be shared. In the defense of education, I pretty much started working at one school and I taught my entire, I taught the entire time at the same school. I don't know if my, I don't know if 
my view on education would be different if I had went to a different place, if I had felt a little bit more support, ETC. Now, I will say that in, you know, my department where I worked, they were great. I worked in two different departments because I, my, my certification, I have a dual certification. And I think that's, that was also part of my issue because I kept on feeling like I was just being thrown like a ping pong ball, you know? And after a while, it got exhausting because from year to year, I didn't know what my schedule was going to look like. From year to year, I didn't know what I would be teaching. And then also, you know, the position that I was hired for, the reason that they invested money in me with my biology background and invested money in me so I could get all the special education um, pieces that I needed and get my graduate degree, that position was removed. The county decided that they did not, no longer wanted to have the kind of classroom that I was hired to teach. So towards the end, it was just really frustrating because I just felt like I was just being, I was, I became a babysitter and I loved the building relationship with my students. You know, I love that part of it. I even love the creation aspect of education, like creating lesson plans, especially for me, because I taught students a very somewhat abstract topic, students who needed like concrete understandings of very abstract topics, um, because of their limitations. Um, it was fun trying to find ways or create ways to help them kind of understand what I was trying to teach. So that aspect of education was fun. But there were so many other pieces that was not fun to me. And again, one of them was definitely the uncertainty and the fact that, you know, people will take advantage of you. And it's not typically, it's not in my nature to be confrontational. Like I had enough going on in my personal life that I did not want to go to work to be confrontational. I just wanted to do my job. You know, and I love the aspect of the autonomy in education, especially if you teach like I did in high school. Um, you're pretty much left to your own devices uh, until they come to evaluate you. Um, so I liked all those aspects. So my battery died. But anyways, it just got to a point where I felt like my life was like butting heads with my, you know, job. And it wasn't like just my business. It was just, it was everything, you know? Before that, I had been able to kind of like interwave or interwove, interwove, I was able to interwove, you know what I'm trying to say. I was able to like make everything work together, but it just got increasingly harder and harder. Like my battery finally charged. Um, I had a call, but I thought, let me wrap up. So I'm sure you're like, girl, get to the point. I know. I, um, I spent maybe anywhere between two to three hours commuting. I worked a really early, I worked in an early school, so I had to be at work at 7.15. And I felt, and I still, you know, stayed after school most days to, you know, catch up on work, grade papers, plan lessons, all those kind of things, attend meetings, all the things that no one ever factors into what teachers do. Um, and so, and then I'd come home probably around six, I'd rush, take care of you, make dinner, make sure Alex did his homework, did all my mommy duties. And then as soon as all of that was done, as soon as I could get him to bed, I had to pivot and start working on blog posts and filming videos and things like that. Um, and then if I had any days off, like, you know, for MLK or whatever the case may be, Veterans Day, whatever, you know, rather than lounging and relaxing, I'd be working. So I was, I, I was honestly getting burnt out. And I think in 2018, probably was when I was the most burnt out just trying to manage everything because I could finally see this becoming a business for me. Um, and, you know, I had other commitments as well um, outside of work and school and parenting. So, yeah, uh, it came to a point where I had to make a decision. And I think um, by 2018, I was pretty sure what I wanted to do, but I was just, I was just afraid. I, I had limited support um, personally. And so I was like, what if I fail? What if I make a mistake? So I spent the whole summer griping about it. And then I decided to go back to work. I decided to continue, but I, I, I wasn't happy. I actually got into like a mini depression about it because I was like, you know, why can't I believe in myself? Why can't I make this decision? So on and so forth. Um, and, but what, the luxury that gave me though was to get my finances a little bit more in order and just get things more together. So then 2019 came around and um, end of the school year and I knew there was a really strong chance that I was not gonna come back. I told, I mean, I had told my coworker the year before that that I wasn't sure I was coming back and I came back. So at this point, I think they were like, girl, bye. Um, but 
Yeah, so I knew there was a strong chance I was going to come back, but I was scared. Like I said, I'm someone who, I I would say I'm kind of risk averse in a way, but obviously you really can't be a um, risk averse if you want to be an entrepreneur. You have to be willing to take risks. Uh, Gary Vee was interviewing, oh, and he made the statement saying that like people think entrepreneurs are, you know, super risk takers, but we're not. We always take the decision that we think is right. We're not. We don't take decisions that we think are wrong. Um, and that was a fun perspective to that. Um, I think it was Warren Buffett. I think it was him. But anyways, so I had to make a decision in 2019. I was like, am I going back to education or am I doing blogging? Because doing both was just no longer an option for me. Like, um, so all of this led to my decision. Um, I felt like, you know, just, I just couldn't do both things. I felt like I was doing really pissed. I wasn't doing my best at work and I also wasn't doing my best in my business either. And so I, 20, I have to be honest, the summer of 2019, although I, I was moving, um, I, I traveled, I went to Dubai. There's a vlog that one day will be up on this channel. Um, I was also really grappling with this decision. Like I spent a lot of the time on my knees, praying, fasting, just, you know, really asking God for him to co-sign. So I, you know, I knew that I was on the right path. Just different things happened that kind of, you know, gave me the peace that I was looking for. And so the big secret, <laughs> I am now a full-time content creator. And so I sent in my resignation and I left my job. Okay. So it's been an entire quarter since I've been a entrepreneur full time, a creative entrepreneur full time. And I didn't really say anything about it because I, you know, when I left my job, because I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. Um, I wasn't sure if I was quitting my job to, you know, just go find another job. If I was quitting my job to, you know, find a work from home job. Um, because, you know, in a lot of ways, I, I don't want to waste the knowledge that I, I have, you know, picked up from years of working education, from working with students with special needs. I still want to use that side of my brain and that kind of expertise in more of like a freelance or like a um, contractor type of situation rather than just working traditionally in a classroom or in the school. And so I wasn't really sure like what, what was next. So I didn't want to make a big announcement because I know that, you know, a lot of times I see like People, when they make the pivot, you know, they make big announcements and all that good stuff. And I didn't know. I was also scared because I was like, I don't want to make this announcement and then fail. <laughs> um, and so, and look stupid. Um, and so I just kept quiet for a little while. I did like a soft announcement on Instagram because um, some people started asking me, like, they noticed that I started doing stories during the day. They're like, why are you doing stories during the day? Um, and for a while, I didn't really answer. And then finally, I was just like, yeah. You know, I left my job. I'm doing um, content creating full time um, and not just content creator. And right now I am in business for myself. And one of the things that I've definitely learned from this last quarter is in, is like flexibility. So you may have in mind that this is exactly what you want to do, but um, the market decides. So, you know, I have been fortunate enough, you know, to get some great deals. I, you know, I worked with QVC. Um, I've worked with CVS. I've worked with Shop Tagger. I've worked with big, brand, big brands, small brands, you know, ETC. Like God has been really faithful to me. Um, and I just want to thank him on camera for that um and but i'm also looking to you know diversify my income streams and do different things so definitely be on the lookout for that um but i thought it was time i finally shared with you guys my journey i decided that i needed to stop being scared of failing because even if i fail that's part of learning and fail forward i don't i'm not i'm not here to fail let's get it let's get it together but the point is um i was just I didn't want to say anything because I was scared that if it, things didn't go as they were supposed to, that I would look stupid. But it's okay though, because I feel like no matter what the next year, six months, the next six months, one year, five years um, turns into, it will be a, le a learning experience for me and will also be a learning, and a learning experience that I will share with you. So we're on this journey together. <laughs> we're on this journey. But I just, 2020... I feel like finally I'm able to put 
all the things that have been swarming in my head, right? That I always had excuses as to why I couldn't do because I just didn't have the time to. I can finally really open up my heart and 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 give all that I can to this community that I've built thus far. Okay, let me know if you have any additional questions about blogging, business, branding. Um, if you would like for me to make more like videos on, you know, what it was like as a side you know, blogging as a side hustle and what it's like blogging right now as a full-time gig, um, how I was able to make that pivot, um, all that kind of good stuff. I would love, love, love to share that kind of information, but I just want to make sure that it's something that you guys want to see. So if you're looking to develop, improve, or level up your style in 2020, check out one of these videos. Or if you'd like to know what life is like for a creative entrepreneur or a <laughs> mompreneur um, and you want to see like behind the scenes of my work, you can check out this video.